Caribbean Newsline is brought to you by the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. Grenada could have an opposition in Parliament after a government legislator resigns. Our top story in Caribbean Newsline for Wednesday, November 20th from the CMC News Centre in Bridgetown. I'm Don Paris. Good evening. Government legislator Tobias Clement has resigned from the ruling New National Party, NNP, and could end up sitting on the other side of Parliament as opposition leader. The NNP won all 15 seats in the 2018 general election, leaving the Parliament without an opposition, but senior party officials have confirmed that Clement, who represents the St. George Northeast constituency, officially tendered his resignation with immediate effect on Wednesday via a WhatsApp message to NNP Chairman Anthony Boatswain ahead of the budget address by Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell. It's not clear why he decided to leave the party. Clement said he is keeping the decision on whether he will sit on the opposition bench close to his chest. If he does, the opposition leader, sit as opposition leader, Clement would be able to give an official response to the budget presentation as well as appoint three opposition senators in the upper house of parliament. Trinidad and Tobago's Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley has called on the opposition United National Congress, UNC, to come clean on the role it played in helping political consulting firm Cambridge Analytica engage in data mining in the Twin Island Republic a few years ago. He made the call less than 24 hours after opposition leader Kamla Prasad Bissessor sought to distance her party from the British company on the heels of the government formally asking police to launch a criminal investigation into the services Cambridge Analytica provided to the People's Partnership Administration, which she headed. Speaking at a UNC public meeting on Monday night, Prasad Bissessor insisted that the UNC had nothing to do with the company, and in any case, it did not matter, as citizens were more interested in being able to make ends meet. But addressing a local government election campaign of his People's National Movement on Tuesday night, Prime Minister Rowley insisted the opposition had questions to answer. The UNC must tell us what they did to this country's database. They must tell us that meeting that they had, where, where they have named people who are now disowning their own minutes. They must tell us that all these foreigners in their companies are mad people, and they just decide to figure but of course, they just told you, your database doesn't matter. They didn't care. They didn't care what happens to you. They still don't care what happened to you. And they are lying to you so that you could just accept what they have done and they could continue to do it again. In a letter to Police Commissioner Gary Griffith last Thursday, National Security Minister Stuart Young said serious allegations had been made by Cambridge Analytica whistleblower Christopher Wiley, who discussed in his book the role he played in hijacking the profiles of Trinidad and Tobago nationals on behalf of the UNC ahead of the elections. And as Dominicans prepare to go to the polls next month, Bishop of Roseau Gabriel Malzir has called for peaceful general elections. And he described as a very sad situation the violence that has so far plagued the election campaign. On Monday night, police fired tear gas to disperse protesters who'd gathered outside the official residence of President Charles Savrin, calling for electoral reform. Addressing a press conference on Wednesday, Bishop Malzir expressed disappointment at the violence. I think we need to work towards correcting it because it's not a nice feature at all. I think everybody deserves a peaceful election and everybody is looking forward to a peaceful election because the loss of Dominica is the loss of absolutely every single person. So we have to, and I've invited the Catholic congregation to pray in preparation for that day and to fast and pray and to dispose themselves to something peaceful. Anything other than that is not worthy of what we're doing. So 
I would pray that the election would be able to go on as peacefully as possible. Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt has warned that the protests could paint the island in a negative light. And on Tuesday, the U.S. Embassy issued a demonstration alert for Dominica, advising its citizens to exercise caution when visiting the island. Staying in Dominica, the Public Service Union says it has decided how to proceed in its efforts to press government to increase wages, but it's keeping that course of action close to its chest for now. The union met with its membership on Tuesday night, and there were media reports that it had sanctioned industrial action. But General Secretary Thomas Leitang said while a firm decision had been taken, it could not yet be made public. He said there, were dis there was discussion at the meeting about the slow pace of negotiations and the fact that the government had not made an offer, and he said public officers were not satisfied with where the negotiations are. Leitang said the union will meet with members on Friday and have further discussions and make a move next week. He lamented that even with a general election around the corner, government is yet to put an offer on the table in response to the union's request, which was put forward since December last year, for a 10% increase for the 2018-2021 period. It's clear to the government that um, while we are willing to work with them, to see increased performance in the public service because at the end of it the country the union and everyone is going to benefit but we cannot run from the fact that negotiation is the substantive issue that we are discussing and therefore that matter has to be on the table why at this point in time with such a major event about to take place in the country that any government would not come up with a proposed salary increase to public officers. The Guyana government says it was blindsided by the decision of an Australian mining company to fire 375 workers. The company Troy Resources decided on Monday to terminate the services of those workers who had been laid off when it suspended operations last month after a death on one of its sites. We get more in this Newsroom Guyana report. The company employed a total of 512 staff. Only 137 are being retained. Those persons are currently conducting exploration work, repairs to the processing plant, and security duties. The Australian mining company seized operations in early October following the death of Ryan Taylor, a geologist, at his Hicks site on October 8, which then resulted in a cease work order being issued by the minister with responsibility for labor, Keith Scott. The order was subsequently rescinded by Minister of Social Protection and Amna Ali after it was agreed that Troy Resources will improve working conditions at its Kairouni Region 7 operations. But the government says it had no idea that Troy Resources would terminate the services of the employees. Minister of Natural Resources Raphael Trotman told the Department of Public Information Tuesday that the administration is disappointed with the decision taken by the company's board. But we're most disappointed, I have to say. Uh, I don't believe that we were given sufficient notice of this action. Uh, board ministers did engage the company's management last week and none of us had a sense that this was going to happen. We did hear that there was going to be a board meeting, yes, uh, and so we are disappointed to say the least in this uh, outcome. Trotman said that a ministerial committee will reach out to the company again. We believe that every door has been opened for them to resume operations in as short a time as possible. We've made that possible for them. And so we will be engaging the company about early restarting and as well, of course, bringing all of these workers back on. This is not the time of the year that we should see workers going home. They have homes, it's Christmas, it's the end of the year. So cabinet has asked that we have a, a ministerial subcommittee that will engage this company and all others that may be having issues at this point in time. The CEO of Troy Resources, however, claimed that it was unable to restart its operations due to financial issues. Some of our, our major problems have always been around the smart street pit. The wall instability that has caused us to shut it down several times for safety reasons. We've gone back, redesigned it, enlarged it, but what it does, it takes that stream of water out of the overall plan. 
No, we have quite clearly done quite well for a while because we paid back all the loans that we used to, to build this place in the first place. So that, so we are square on that one. We still have some outstanding issues, but so in terms of producing what we thought we would, no, we have never really met the targets because of external forces. Still to come, Barbados' Prime Minister lights a fire under the country's sole power company to ensure island-wide blackouts that hit the country this week do not reoccur. Stay with us. Welcome back. Barbados' Prime Minister Mia Motley says island-wide power outages that affected the country this week must never happen again. And she's made it clear to the country's electricity provider, the Barbados Light and Power Company, BLNP, that it must do better. The privately owned company restored power to the island late on Tuesday night after two straight days of blackouts. But it admitted that all was still not well as the situation was still delicate. On Tuesday night, at a press conference alongside BLMP officials whom she'd met with earlier, Motley disclosed that as a short-term measure, the electricity company would be seeking to acquire backup generators to supplement its services, and it would be working around the clock to return stability to the island's power supply. So we are very clear that there is nothing other than the loss of life inappropriately or corrupt practice, practices that will be taken off of the table to resolve this problem. I think we have shared our perspective as a government with the Barbados Light and Power. They have agreed in principle that we will work together to make sure that whatever is done, including 24-hour days, including multiple teams, that we will look and revisit every assumption that has been made that would otherwise see new generation capacity not coming on board for another 12 to 18 months. This, we believe, is not tenable. We are going to manage this over the course of the next few days, but we have enough information before us to know that the question will be whether they can procure immediately tomorrow generating capacity or whether they will have to rent in the interim for a few weeks, have the generating capacity brought on the island while they procure the permanent one that will give the country at least the comfort of another minimum of 30 megawatts of power, what they call the energy bridge. BLMP's managing director Roger Blackman explained that a series of extraordinary events had led to the power outages, including faults at one of the BLMP's substations. He said fuel had also contributed to the situation. Blackman repeatedly apologized for the inconvenience and said efforts were being made to avoid a recurrence. We'll also be looking at bringing in expertise 
to help us both uh, from the standpoint of being able to effect repairs as pumps uh, go down or equipment is affected, to have sufficient resources and expertise supplementing what we have to be able to effect those repairs as quickly as possible. Um, so once again, apologies. Um, we are working very hard to ensure that we um, we don't have a recurrence, but it is a very delicate situation at the moment until the fuel situation is resolved. And you can rest assured that we're working with the teams to resolve the situation. Prime Minister Motley had said it was simply not acceptable that the last time the BLMP purchased new generators was 14 years ago and that the issue of compensation to consumers would be addressed at a later date. But Blackman sought to explain that while most of the generators were past their due retirement, that was only because the company did not see a need to purchase new equipment after the previous Democratic Labour Party administration assured that two projects would be coming on stream to meet much of the island's electricity needs. One of them, the controversial Cahill Energy Project to convert waste to energy, would have allowed the power company to retire some of its generating capacity. Blackman said that plan, along with the fact that Barbados was moving towards renewable energy, had contributed to the company's decision to repair some of its aging generators rather than buy new ones. But it's time for Newsline Business Now, and farmers in Jamaica are beginning to feel the effects of the sliding dollar, and a new online directory of services is to come on stream soon. Mary Claire Williams has the details. The slide in the Jamaica dollar is taking a toll on the agriculture sector. Farmers now face increased production costs and there are concerns that consumers may soon face higher prices as a result. President of the Jamaica Agriculture Society, Edward Fulton, says he will present a proposal to government that would give farmers and consumers an ease. I am going to do a technical paper with more than one, some GCT has imposed on some seeds as well. And planting material with the sliding dollar is getting too high. So therefore, if you can give us a break with the GCT, you'll end up getting the produce from the farm at the farm field more reasonable. So I'm going to put a technical paper with few things on it, including egg to the minister to see if he can go to the Ministry of Finance on our behalf. Regional companies will soon have another avenue for sourcing new business. Easy Quote Info Caribbean will be launched in Barbados on Friday. CEO Mark Foster tells Newsline Business the new online directory of service providers will offer a more comprehensive package to customers. It will change the way directory listings are done. Um, at present, you will have to go to each Caribbean territory and choose the service you want there, get the listing and call each and every person. Now, in the electronic format, you can either choose the territory or don't choose a territory. And anyone at all who offers that service gets the opportunity. So you're no longer sitting and waiting for someone to come back to you. It is all instant. And it obviously helps the Caribbean um, as we all move into a greater push for CSME. It helps those who have services and products now be open to the entire Caribbean market. Easy Quote Info Caribbean is available in Barbados and Jamaica, and there are plans to expand to other islands. Mary Claire Williams, Newsline Business. Ahead in sport, Guyanese fast bowler Wansford beaten, suspended with immediate effect for illegal bowling. The details when we return. It's time for you to experience and be part of the all-new Hennessy Artistry. December 7th, Kensington Oval, making his debut performance in Barbados, Salvito. If I tell you, say I love you all. Dexter Dabs. Messica. Anthony B. Nobody want no plastic. Taurus Riley. I rather to live on the All-Star. And Barbados Best Hypa Sounds. Edwin here one. And Len Pipe. Hosted by Major Hype and Peter Coppin. Showtime, 9 p.m. General tickets $100 and the all-inclusive Privilege Lounge 350, regular 400. And the all-new Hennessy Artistry. As a small business owner, you have to make sure your technology is available and operational at all times. 
But what happens when your network crashes, your email goes down, or your user systems get a virus? You may try to fix the issue yourself, but you can end up making the problem a lot worse. At Digital Networking Solutions, we're more than just people who try to fix your computers. We monitor, maintain, and support your IT systems so that you can focus on growing your business to its fullest potential. When you sign up for one of our IT support plans, we get familiar with your IT environment beforehand, so we can manage it proactively as if it were our own. Your business deserves the best IT services available to ensure it functions to its maximum efficiency. So give us a try today. Email or call us and we will give you a free network assessment to determine whether now is the time for your small business to adopt digital networking solutions for a smoother, more reliable network experience. You may have heard that you should have disaster supplies on hand, but what should you pack? How to get started? And what maintenance is necessary? Disaster supply kits should include preserved or canned foods, clean water in sanitized containers, at least five gallons per family member per day, extra medical supplies such as insulin, inhalers, blood pressure medication, an emergency you can help yourself and others by looking listening and linking looking because you want to see if the person has some signs that is in distressing looking for the symptoms how best you can support the person and then listening because listening is very important listening with your ears listening with your eyes if you do that well then you'll be able to link them to the appropriate resources be ready look Listen and link. Fast bowler Wandsford Beaton has been suspended with immediate effect from domestic cricket after an opinion report done by an independent assessor found the bowling action of the Ghana Jaguars pacer to be illegal. A release on Wednesday said the assessment revealed that Beaton's deliveries exceeded the 15 degrees level of tolerance permitted under playing regulations. It says the Guyanese pacer will remain suspended until such time as this action is found to be legal in accordance with the Cricket West Indies regulations for dealing with suspected illegal bowling actions. Beaton, who is playing with the last year's losing finalist Ghana Jaguars in the ongoing regional Super 50 tournament, was reported during his side's Group B contest against the United States last Monday. He's expected to undergo remedial work supervised by the Jaguars franchise and can apply for a reassessment after modifying his bowling actions. This is not the first time Red Flag have been raised about Beaton's action. He was suspended from bowling by the International Cricket Council after being reported following a one-day international against New Zealand two years ago. Beaton has played just two ODIs, both in the 2017 tour of New Zealand. While Leeward Islands Hurricanes captain Jamar Hamilton and Devon Thomas scored unbeaten half centuries as regional Super 50 Group A hosts took another step towards a semi final berth with a convincing six wicket victory over reigning champions CCC Marooners on Tuesday. In pursuit of 191 for victory at Connery, Hurricanes overcame an early blip to coast to victory with nine overs remaining. Thomas top scored with 78 not out of 96 deliveries with nine fours and a six, while Hamilton ended on 77 not out of 114 balls, striking seven fours and three sixes. Hurricanes were floundering on 32 for four in the eighth over after new ball pacers Carlos Rathwit and Akeem Jordan sliced through the top order. But Thomas and Hamilton produced a match winning unbroken fifth wicket stand of 152 to deny Marooners. With the win, Hurricanes moved to 16 points from four wins and two defeats, while Marooners remained rooted to the bottom of the table with four points from their single win in six outings. Meantime, Kavem Kavem Hodge struck his maiden list A-100, but it proved in vain as opener Chandrapal Hemraj carved his second century to lift Ghana Jaguars 
well, Guyana Jaguars to a crucial 22-run victory over Windward late Tuesday, chasing 295 in a day-night Group B fixture at Queen's Park Oval. Hodge fashioned a high-quality 123 of 145 deliveries as Volcanoes ended on 272 for 8 off their 50 overs to extend their wretched run with their fifth defeat in six outings. Hemraj, meanwhile, made exactly 100 of 116 balls in an innings that laid the foundation for Jaguars' impressive 294 for 9 off their 50 overs after being sent in. Opening partner Tajna Ryan Shandapal struck a patient 64, while Raymond Reefer produced a cameo 52 of 33 deliveries to propel Jaguars to their highest total of the innings. Jaguars, who have been unconvincing throughout the campaign, moved to 16 points with their, four wins, with their fourth win in six matches, creating a virtual deadlock in the group. And West Indies emerging players stumbled in their bid for a semi-final spot when they went down by 43 runs in to United States in Taruba, asked to chase a seemingly straightforward 217 at the Brian Lara Stadium. Emerging players suffered a batting meltdown and were bundled out for 173 in the 45th over. Kevin Sinclair top scored with a breezy 44 off 46 deliveries, batting at number seven, while the inform Joshua De Silva struck 31 off 46. But his side never really recovered from a position of 94 for six in the 27th over. Emerging players remain on top of Group B, but tied on 16 points with second place Trinidad and Tobago Red Force and Guyana Jaguars. To football now, a late goal by Uriel Antuna killed Bermuda's hopes of holding down the mighty Mexicans who broke the equalizer to beat the Caribbean side 2-1 as action in the CONCACAF Nations League continued on Tuesday. Striker Dante Leverock opened the scoring for Bermuda 10 minutes into the game before Sebastian Cardova tied things up in the 27th minute. The Bermudians held their nerve to take the game down to the wire before Antuna scored from close range in the third minute of, sec of the second half injury time to give the host full match points. Cordova on his left, wow. what a strike! Sebastian Cordova levels things for El Tree. Here we go in the second half. It's still Wells, just past the far post. Slightest bit concerned. Here's Jimenez, saved by Eve. Cordova. And Tuna! It's a late winner for Mexico! And that's the sport. We'll be right back. Caribbean Newsline is brought to you by the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. Hi, I'm Brittany Dixon, and you're watching Finding Fit, the show where I pair up one client with two trainers. Trainer number one. Oh, my gosh. It's about fitness, comedy. You know, I can do this all day, you know. Drama. Um, in the future, we cannot be late. Inspirational stories and so much <gasps> more. You are going to love it. You can catch Finding Fit prime time this fall on Care Vision. On this edition of Caribbean Passport, we relive highlights of Carifesta 14's opening ceremony. Lots to do, lots to see as we explore Destination Barbados. And we continue our look into the Sustainable Tourism Conference held in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. All this and more right here on this station. Again, the major developments of this day. Grenada could have a parliamentary opposition following Wednesday's resignation of the government MP Tobias Clement. And in sport, Guyanese fast bowler Wansford Beaton suspended from domestic cricket with immediate effect for illegal bowling. And that's Caribbean News Line. For news and sport around the clock, subscribe to CanonNews.com. And for more of our programming, log on to caravision.tv and check out our YouTube channel. We'll be back here again tomorrow. But from all of us at CMC News, thank you for watching and have yourselves a good night.